have you ever felt like there aren't enough hours in the day? Do you ever lie in bed for what seems like forever, waiting for sleep to come? Or when the alarm sounds, do you feel groggy and not wanting to wake up? My name is Amanda Montalegre, and I'm here to tell you today about polyphasic sleep. And I'm trying to persuade you why it might be helpful to you. Now, first things first, I have to define polyphasic sleep. But before I do that, I'll tell you what monophasic sleep. That is, when you sleep once in a 24-hour period. Most of you probably do that. There's also biphasic sleep, which is what a lot of uh, people do in like Hispanic countries. They take a nap in the middle of the day. And then there's polyphasic sleep, which is where you do uh, certain schedules of sleep. The most common one is the everyman sleep schedule. That's where you sleep three times uh, for 20 minute naps and then a core hour, four, core four hour sleep. And then there's Uberman, which is six naps that are 20 minutes. And then the more extreme one, which is the Dymaxian, which is four naps for 30 minutes each. And you may be thinking, like, whoa, this is really weird. What are you, what are you doing? But according to the National Sleep Foundation, 85% of mammalian species follow a polyphasic sleep schedule. And then you think, like, what? They're, they're probably animals, whatever. But if you think about babies, they take so many naps during the day. They don't just sleep once. Same with the elderly. Sometimes they have trouble sleeping multiple times, um, once per night. So now I'll explain to you how this works. You see, there's five stages of sleep, ranging from light sleep to deep sleep to REM, which is rapid eye movement, which is um, when you have your dreams, it's the most important see, uh, stage of your sleep. So polyphasic sleep, how that works is you train your body to condense the first stages of sleep and go straight to the REM. And then according to the American Psychological uh, Association, this is a really cool experiment that they did where they tested people for three days and they woke them up when they slept every time they reached REM. And the first day, they had to be woken up 14 times. And the second day, they had to be woken up maybe like 20 times. And then on the third night, they had to be woken up 64 times because their body just jumped right to REM. So this is saying that your body can adjust to going straight to REM sleep. Now, why would you do this? Benefits, you train your body to go to sleep really quick, within minutes. And um, also, you train your body after enough experience to wake up after like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, however long. And because of that, you're awake for more hours in the day to do things that you want to do. I actually personally did this um, going into senior year. I only did it for two weeks because school was about to start, but it was a crazy experience. Like, it's a story for another day. But <laughs> besides crazy people, who else would use this? You see, Canadian Marine pilots had to experiment with polyphasic sleep because it had to be, you know, flying a plane and it's sleeping too without crashing. So um, studies show that 10 to 20 minute naps uh, stave off sleep deprivation. Also, NASA experimented with this. They suggest that the astronauts get eight hours of sleep, but that's really hard when you're floating in a sleeping bag in the middle of outer space. So they say that 40 minute naps uh, increase performance by 34% and alertness by 100%. And also, all these well-known people also practice polyphasic sleep, whether it be biphasic or, or more. So, because of all this, I have to mention a few caveats, a few warnings. There aren't that many long-term studies that are done on this topic, so you should kind of be careful, especially if you're adjusting to a schedule, you might oversleep a couple days, so it'll take longer to adjust. So be careful when you're operating heavy machinery, like cars or something. And also there's a thing called sleep inertia, which is, you know, when you wake up and then you feel all groggy for maybe even up to an hour. That's um, you have to be careful with that. So um, there's this really cool app. It's called the Sleep Cycle Alarm Clock. It, um, it tells you, um, what is it? You put it next to your bed when you sleep, and then it tracks your motion when you sleep, like, you know, the little twitches that you do. And um, it shows you what cycle, you're, what stage you're in in the sleep, which is really cool. And I've been using this for 488 days. And um, today, not, that was last night's sleep. So, um, and uh, it, it's really cool. You set it to like, um, what is it? You tell it, wake me up half an hour before this time or an hour before this time. And it wakes you up at the peak moment of your sleep. So this was a really helpful tool for me when I was doing my little um, polyphasic sleep experiment. And um, wow, it's really cool. Anyways, so I went over uh, polyphasic sleep, monophasic sleep, biphasic sleep, the different sleep schedules. And I told you why they're beneficial. I told you how they work, how they work with their sleep schedules. And I told you about the, the people that use it and how it's helpful to them. So 
take all that into consideration, and hopefully you'll uh, take into account that polyphasic sleep might be the right sleep schedule for you to be most efficient in your days. Thank you.